Welcome everyone to your favorite podcast, Coffee with Yeah. My name is Alexander Lyubomirovic and today we have a special surprise for you. Today we're going to do an interview with a famous Western Balkan musician Goran Bregovic and I really hope that you're going to enjoy. Dobar dan. Hello and Hello. Uh, welcome, welcome to, to Brussels. Um, really honored to, to have this interview with you. So the first question will be, um, like, although we are all like different and diverse within the European Union and the Western Balkans, music has this amazing ability to bring us all together under one joint roof. Uh, what kind of emotions does music awaken within uh, every single one of us so that uh, we forget all of, of our differences? Well, you know that music scientifically is first human language. They found one flute in Germany 20,000 years old, which means that human beings had music and they did the music, they make the music before they learn how to speak, before religion, before politics, before anything. So if you speak good this language called music, it's communicate, of course, easily. It's uh, something that is deeper than language. You know, you can, there are some writers who write on the foreign languages, like, I don't know, Milan Kundera, he writes on French, or Salman Rushdie, he, he writes on English. But music, you, always, it, you will always feel from where it comes. I don't know, from Stravinsky to Gershwin to Bon or Lennon McCartney, you will always know that what is behind, what is grandfather and grandmother of this music. Yeah, um, so of, of, of course um, music is, is, like you said, the, the first language and um, somehow also the, the common language of, of um, all of us. So um, my next question is also related to this. Um, the last um, two years have been uh, certainly really challenging for, for European unity and uh, due to the coronavirus and uh, also the crisis currently in Ukraine. Uh, but um, what is the role of, of music in these uh, challenging times and how can music help us to, to overcome our boundaries, our differences? Well, unfortunately, I can do much more than one politician. <laughs> but unfortunately, the music doesn't have this power to change the things. But it's, uh, you know how it's music. It's, it's, it's like a salt. You can eat without, but it's not the same taste. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, coming back to, to the West, Western Balkans now, um, the Western Balkans, um, Western Balkan countries haven't um, always, um, unfortunately, seen uh, eye to eye in, in, in the past. How can music influence to, to break these long-lasting prejudice and historic boundaries in our region? Uh, can music heal the wounds of, of the past? What is the role in, in like uh, the, the peace building of, of our region? You know, so knowing somebody's culture changed the things. So it's, it's nice to know that some, I don't know, a few thousand people tonight will, uh, will hear the music from one composer from, from Europe, but very far away from Europe. So it's important to know some of this culture. And what is happening nowadays, probably for the first time in history, there is one curiosity about small cultures. I play my music from Siberia till Iceland, from uh, New Zealand till Hong Kong, and I have audience everywhere. If you are naive, you think that everything is visible on TV, on YouTube. No, there is completely millions of parallel worlds. There is people who are curious to find even more weird composers than I am. So for the first time, probably we're witnessing this curiosity for the small cultures, not only in music, in literature, in cinematography, in kitchen, if you want. So, the world became a nice place. Of course. And um, in, in my modest opinion, you're, you're a musician that uh, can also unite our, our um, countries in the Western Balkans. You're listened to all over, not only our region, but also uh, worldwide and um, also the, the youth. The, mu the music make easy the things which po for politicians is impossible. Especially on the place where the music was 
since always done just for drinking. <laughs> we don't have uh, anything serious, you know. It's uh, on the time of the first opera of Monteverdi, Orfeo, we had just instrument for one chord, Gusle. That's the same instrument that was accompanying Iliade and Odyssey. So the, our music was since always just for drinking. So it's easy to put us together around the table, drinking and singing. Unfortunately, politicians make things much more complicated. Yeah, so, so um, as, as famous persons and, and a famous mu musician, what, what message would you send to the youth of, of the Western Balkans? What is your message to, to us and to them? But it goes that f borders are open, that people travel, that there is internet, there is a lot of ways to know the world, not to be stuck. Because this is dangerous. If you think that world finished on your, on your hometown border or your state border, it's dangerous. So it, I think everything goes much better than it was before. And the world is getting better. Of course, definitely, definitely. Um, so. Um, this is going to maybe be an interesting question for you. Um, which three songs, in your, your opinion, uh, in the best way describe uh, or represent the Balkans? But you, you know, songs are always, uh, I don't know, moment of fashion, if you want. <laughs> but I will, I will recommend uh, to listen to my, my violin concerto called Three Letters from Sarajevo which was commissioned from uh, Basilic Saint-Denis in Paris, and it was written for, for Orchestre National de, de Ile de France. Violin was my first instrument, so... You know that violin is, is, is played in three main manners. Christian, how we play classical music. Klezmer, how we play Jews, which is one different, quite different technique. And Oriental, how Muslims play. Uh, violin, which is completely different technique. So I wrote one violin concerto for actually three violinists that comes from those three traditions and symphonic orchestra and, and singers. So probably, you know, if you are in rush, you, you just go on YouTube. But if you are not in rush, <laughs> have patience for one violin concerto. There are some people who, who can accept those kind of signals, which are not that fast, but slow signals if you have time, when you have time. One final question. Um, so, what what is the purpose of like um, music festivals in, in general? Um, what kind of message will you send um, this evening, and uh, why it is important like uh, for these events nowadays? What is their primary goal? Well, you know, people is it now needs to have instant food. So the festival is actually instant food. You are you can hear on one place so many different things you can choose every moment. So this is why festivals are so popular. This is why people organize their vacations uh, for, just to go on the festivals. And uh, it's good. In short time, you can, you can see and pick up different things. Uh, Balkan traffic will present in those two days so many different things from, from that area. And it's, it's nice to know that this is possible. You know, when, I don't know, some uh, Western music, it's easy to, to organize this kind. But for one, marginal music makes such a big festival, like, well, like Balkan, Balkan traffic. I, I suppose it's not easy to do it. That's all. So um, I'm going to wish you good luck and a Thank good you. performance uh, this evening uh, from my side and from the side of, of um, our project. And uh, it was a pleasure. Uh, I wish you all the best. Uh, interview. Thank you very much. Thank you.